Hi guys, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music and uh, it may seem a bit weird for some of you who have been following my piano lessons where I am always playing a piano, uh, but in this lesson I wanted to talk a little, a little bit about the shakers and its use in music production. As we know in almost any musical context you have a drummer, right? and the drummer will be playing the low end which is the kick, he will be playing the, the smack of the snare and there is always going to be a hi-hat and in a lot of the records you would have heard whether it is disco, whether it is dance or whether it is folk music or country music, you will generally find a shaker or a tambourine used in that. So, if you are a, a music producer or a composer or just a guy who is making music at home, it is quite a useful skill to learn something like this, a shaker. So, a shaker will come in different, in different shapes as you may have seen, you will have the egg shape, you will have the one I am holding is by Meinl, it is uh, the Louis Conte percussion series and um, this is basically a soft shaker. So, it is it sort of just complements the song, it could be used with a hi-hat or it could also be used for a song which is not as hard hitting like, like folk music which is not as hard and as heavy as maybe rock music, right. So, in this lesson I just wanted to share about a few techniques on how to use this instrument, it is an amazing instrument and I have been using it a lot for my, for my own music. The first thing to realize is a shaker can't really play quarter notes like, like that because you are always going to get that additional annoying sound in any case, right. So, what you always want to do is maintain an even flow with your arm and you are going to be generating eighth notes or else if you do it quicker you would be getting sixteenth notes and so on and so forth. So, as a start I would suggest to practice eighth notes which is basically double of the beat. So, if this is my beat, the shaker is going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Right and also when you use it try to not use too much of the shoulder because if you use the shoulder you will get tired a lot faster and also what is going to happen is your elbow is going to get displaced. What you want is you want just your wrist and a little bit of your forearm I guess, this part of the hand definitely not here to do the job of playing the shaker because if you play it from the wrist area all that is going to happen is this sort of motion. As you can see I am barely using my shoulder, if I use my shoulder I could but then I may lose a lot of control. Maybe you can do it with your shoulder, I do not know, uh, to be honest I am not a very professional trained percussionist, but from what I have observed you also get a, you get very tired if you use your shoulder, it is a lot more easier with the wrist. And then after you get 8th notes which is division of 2 of the beat, you can then do 16th notes. And the thing about the shaker is it is easier to play faster, which is a really cool thing about an instrument in my opinion. So, if you go 16s, 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a right. And what is very important when you play percussion is to breathe and, and relax when you play. So, focus on your breathing, it may seem a bit weird because your breathing does not seem to have much to do with the actual instrument, but it will definitely help your entire mind to to get the music flowing, it will not be like a chore or a job, you know. So, something like this and what tends to happen is on the downbeat, you tend to emphasize the shaker more, you go, let me try to show you that with a louder shaker. So, 
So you get this very interesting pattern which also cycles well. If you were to play it without that, you know, it'll be sort of like a loop you can import from whatever in, into your logic or any other DAW. So you want to also make it very human when you play the instrument, right? So you can decide which beats you want to emphasize. What I'm emphasizing now is the one or on the on beats, one, two, three, four, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, two, three, four, a little faster. And as you can see, when I go fast, it's still the wrist which is working. Because as you go faster and faster, you want to use more and more of your wrist and rely more on it. And your entire hand can come into play. If you want to get a little louder, your muscles will do the trick and just make the sound louder. But the, the focus is always going to be on the wrist. Right? And what's also cool about the shaker is anything you do straight, you can also do swung. So it's, it, it, it's quite easy. You just have to imagine the swing feel and... Tuck a duck a tuck a tuck, one e and two e and three e and four e and one e and two. Right? And if you have another shaker, you can complement it. What I normally do is I hit, I hit it on my other leg and uh, you can complement it maybe at the, uh, uh, where a drummer would play a snare drum is where you can perhaps hit this shaker. And that can emphasize whatever you want to emphasize a lot more. And let's say you just use one shaker. It may be tough for some of you to use two. Um, if you use one, you can focus on which beats you want to accent or not accent. So if I do something like this, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So I try to highlight the end or you see what's happening? I emphasize the two and of the beat, one and two and three and four and one. So basically some of the ands here and there you can emphasize by just playing it a little harder. And, and, and. But I would suggest if you're starting off, don't do too much of accents because you may, may lose time. And a very important thing to observe or to notice is the shaker is always going to play with other parts of the percussion ensemble. It could be drums, it could be bongos, it could be cajon, it could be a guitar player or a piano player. So you want to always play with them. And this is an amazing instrument because uh, as a producer especially, even if you keep this really soft in your song or in your mix, you'll still hear it. It's crystal clear and it can just add a sense of energy to your song or a sense of sparkle. And maybe that's just what your song needs. Maybe it's not an EQ or something you do in the technical side of things. Maybe it's just one of these guys. So if you have a band, a four piece or a five piece band, uh, don't feel... Uh, don't be doubtful of using something like this. It could definitely add to your production and it's cool if you do it after or whenever you think you're missing some, some sauce here and there, right? So, hope you guys found that lesson useful and in conclusion, here's a little bit again or a short revision about the shaker. So, I'm holding it in my dominant hand which is my left hand. You could do it with your right hand if you wish and Wrist primarily start off by playing eights divide, divide division by two, four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and get a nice consistent sound. Then a sixteenth, and then try out some accents. 
and if you have another shaker, you can emphasize a few beats here and there. You can also do stuff like this for special effects. I mean, that's something you can explore on your own. So again, if you have any further questions, you can definitely leave us a comment and stay tuned and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already for a lot more lessons by our faculty and some cool performances as well by students and faculty coming your way. Cheers.